I want to get off my birth control, but when I do, my hormones go all over the place. Yes, this is exactly what happens. How can I balance my hormones after having kids? My teenage daughter is dealing with really severe cramps. Do you have any suggestions that aren't pills? The more stress, the more severe the cramps. What are your thoughts on the HPV vaccine? Here's the reality that I wanna share with you right now. Should women do different exercises depending on the stage of their cycle? Yes. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I am Dr. Josh Axe. I'm a graduate of Johns Hopkins University. I am the founder of draxe.com, Ancient Nutrition, and Leaders.com. And this podcast is all about helping you grow into the greatest you. And on today's episode, I'm answering your questions regarding women's health. Now, men, if you're watching this, I don't need to turn it off. Here's what I want to tell you is that women's health, think about what a great husband or boyfriend or friend you can be if you know how to care for your woman that's in need. We're going to talk about everything from balancing your hormones to naturally curing frequent headaches to my thoughts on the HPV vaccine and more. Let's dive in here to the first question. Here it is. I have frequent headaches. How can I heal them naturally? If you're getting ongoing headaches, what I've seen to be is that it's either typically a biochemical issue or a structural issue. If it's biochemical, you may have a food sensitivity, okay, and your body is reacting to something you're eating on a regular basis. What I would do is take a period of time and do what I call an elimination diet or what a lot of people call an elimination diet, and that is there are certain foods you cut out, you add each one back in and see if there's something that's causing headaches. Now, some of the most common cul culprits could be gluten, could be dairy. You might also go in to get a food sensitivity test done to see if you have a high sensitivity to a certain type of food, but that is really, really frequent. The other thing could be, it could be structural where your shoulders and your traps and your neck are getting too tense and that's going up in the back of your head and compressing some of those muscles and it's causing a headache. And if that's the case, seeing a chiropractor can often help. Sometimes getting even a shoulder massage or neck massage can help, uh, but I would say chiropractic care or osteopathic care can be a really, really great uh, remedy for frequent headaches. They can kind of reduce any sort of tension up there, help with, with, with your structure. One of the things that happens actually with headaches, sometimes people get this condition, it's called forward head posture, where their head starts going way out in front of their body, and that puts more tension on the traps and necks, and so then you start to get headaches. And so if you go to see a chiropractor that also does a form of physical therapy, they oftentimes can retrain your body your, and put a curve back in your neck, and that can really, really help headaches. Now, from a supplement standpoint, magnesium is the most commonly prescribed uh, mineral for headaches. You typically want to do probably about 500 to 600 milligrams at a time. I would do a magnesium um, uh, chelate. You could also do a threonate or a citrate powder. Most forms of magnesium can help headaches because they all have a relaxation effect. But that's what I would do. There's a few others as well. Feverfew and Butterbur are a couple others that are often prescribed for headaches. Those are sort of like natural herbal remedies you could try. But I think those are some of the most important. The other big one with sometimes with headaches is hydration. What I would do is get an uh, electrolyte powder. Uh, add it to water and drink some more electrolytes and more water during the day because you'd be surprised how many headaches are due to improper hydration. I think sometimes people think hydration is just drinking water. It's not. It's, hyd it's water plus electrolytes. That is what will actually keep you hydrated. So that's another thing I would recommend there uh, for, uh, for headaches. Um, and again, going back, you, you can't overlook the food sensitivities. This is very, very common cause of regular headaches. Next question here. I have estrogen dominance, low testosterone, and progesterone, and I'm already eating very clean. What should I do? Okay. So if you're estrogen dominant in Chinese medicine, I'm going to I'm gonna hit on that view first, the, the Eastern medicine idea, then I'll hit on it from a Western perspective. But from the Eastern medicine perspective, um, your body is too yin and you're lacking yang, okay? So yin means you're doing a lot of things that are feminine, which can which which you which which are which can be great, right? So that could be yoga. And by the way, what I mean fem feminine, because estrogen is seen though as that more feminine hormone to let's say of testosterone or progesterone on the other side specifically testosterone, but, but, but there are certain things that will cause in more estrogen dominance. And so 
um, uh, certain foods that are that are more yin dominant, which means they're more moistening to the body, that will make things worse. So like flax seeds wouldn't be good or bananas or uh, yogurt or milk, anything that creates more mucus or or fluid in the body will increase estrogen dominance. What will help with that are foods that are, and so that's gonna be a lot of fruit and foods that are, um, again, moistening. Again, I mentioned milk, dairy, those sort of things. All those will make estrogen dominance worse. Soybeans, that'll make it worse too. Some of the foods that will help are foods that support testosterone, which would be doing more meat. So trying to get about 30 to 50 grams of meat per meal. Um, so breakfast could be a protein powder, maybe collagen and a plant protein. And then for lunch, you do a, a you know, chicken. And then for dinner, you do wild salmon or, or, or a grass-fed beef. Okay, But you want to make sure that's your main, you're focusing on protein during your meals. You're also getting some healthy fat. Um, and there are some herbs and things that actually support progesterone, like I believe sage and thyme or herbs you can take um, as well for testosterone. Fenugreek uh, tends to be really, really good. Um, and so you may supplement with those as well. Um, and then milk thistle. Milk thistle helps your body as an herb get rid of extra estrogen. So if you're estrogen dominant and have too much, take milk thistle or drink milk thistle tea on a regular basis to help get, uh, rid your body of the excess estrogen that you currently have going on. But I would say here, here are the remedies. Uh, one, do, for testosterone, you want to start doing some weight training. Do some weight training and interval training rather than something like a yoga. Okay. Uh, from a uh, from a dietary standpoint, loads of protein, a lot of green vegetables, and then I would say like spinach, like steamed vegetables, uh, and then and then again I would do um, I would do some herbs like fenugreek, I would do vitex, I would do um, cinnamon, and I would do thyme. Okay, I would do some of those herbs there. And then you might also look into peptide therapy. You could find a functional medicine physician who does peptides and they could help work on balancing out the hormones that way as well. And I think if you do those things, you're gonna see good results. The other thing, again, milk this. So it's gonna get rid of that extra estrogen for you or at least some of it or, or a liver cleanse like supplement, dandelion, which I don't like dandelion all the time. So milk thistle is probably better for you or, or burdock, something like that. But that, that's what I would do. All right, next question here. Uh, I'm nervous about doing hormone replacement therapy. Are there, are there any other options? Yes. This is where I really like peptide therapy. Okay, peptides. And you can go, what I would do, here's what I would do. I would go online to your area, where, wherever you are. Let's say you lived in Nashville, okay, where I'm located. You could go, and maybe you're in Brentwood or maybe Franklin, but somewhere in the Nashville area, and you do a Google search for peptide therapy, Nashville, Tennessee, or peptide therapy for hormones, Franklin, Tennessee, and just do some research and find somebody that does peptide therapy, but that's what I would do. So I would do peptides. I would also do herbs and spices. So for instance, if I had a woman come into me who, uh, who, who was, who was having some of these, who was having hormone issues. Okay. What I would do is I would have them rather than putting them on hormone replacement, I would say, okay, let's look at your diet. Here's the foods you should eat. These are the ideal foods for estrogen or progesterone or testosterone or thyroid hormone or whatever it is, because there are different foods for each. If you've got a thyroid issue, you want to do a lot of rice and berries and wild fish. But if you have an issue with low testosterone, you want to do a lot of red meat and steamed spinach and herbs like fenugreek, cinnamon, and ginger. So and actually, the foods you eat, food is medicine. And food, it, depending on your condition, certain foods will serve you a lot better than others. I know we tend to think, well, a salad is healthy for everybody or vegetables are healthy for everybody. It's not actually true. Every person, every woman, every man is incredibly unique. And what foods that might completely heal a friend of yours may actually be terrible for you. So going and finding a doctor who can tell you or somebody saying, these are a personalized custom diet for you based on what you have going on. Now, sometimes you can do self-research. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you're too estrogen dominant, you want to consume more yang foods. If you're low in estrogen, then we need to start having you consume more of those yin foods. If you're so, so you can do research and maybe discover this if you're savvy yourself. If not, go and see a good health coach or functional medicine doctor or somebody who knows what they're doing, a nutritionist, somebody knows what they're doing nutrition wise. Um, but here's what they would do. Again, most doctors, they should work on your diet. They should prescribe certain supplements and herbs and then peptides. 
and then maybe even other exercises, things to reduce stress. But that's you want to really focus on healing your body via a protocol, not one thing. There's not one pill. There's not, I mean, that's even the problem with hormone replacement therapy. There's so many things that you should probably be doing to bring harmony to your body. And most doctors are like, here's a supplement, here's a medication, here's an injection. That's not the way that you truly heal. You tend to need to work on the diet, the supplements, the herbs. There are things like peptides. There are lifestyle factors in order to truly create balance. Next question. I want to get off my birth control, but when I do, my hormones go all over the place. Yes, this is exactly what happens. How can I get off of it without these challenges? And what is the a best type of nat what type of natural birth control is best? One, know that that's, that's normal, okay? You're likely gonna have some of that where your hormones are gonna be all over the place after getting off birth control. So one, just accept and know it might be, it, it might be hard, but then it's gonna be easier and easier and easier over time. So just know that you're, you're gonna have a challenge for several months and that's, that's the way it is. What I would say is one of the most important things to do is take a high dose of probiotics, okay? You wanna take maybe even two brands. I, I would take an SBO probiotic and another diverse strain of probiotic because that's what yeast overgrowth is one of the first things that happens when women get off birth control. So you wanna make sure your diet is mostly, is very, is not gonna feed candida. So you wanna do a lot of meat, vegetables, cranberry juice would be good, uh, a little bit of rice. That should be the basis of your diet. Meat, vegetables, little rice, you could do some berries, cranberries, that's that's kind of the ideal diet there for you. Um, and then I would also say, I mentioned this earlier, but I think this can be good for women getting off birth control, doing a little bit of milk thistle, doing a little bit of uh, an anti-candida uh, candida tea, something that has something like cinnamon or ginger, even like a chai tea would be really good. So you want something to really keep your blood sugar balanced. One of the keys, I think, is keeping insulin as balanced as possible when you get off of birth control. And outside of that, just keep stress down. Um... I like red light therapy. I think that can help doing the infrared light. I think there's some benefits there, but I think also just knowing it's just going to take a little bit of time. Okay. Um, and then you might go and see a functional medicine doctor after you've been off a month or two, go and do a micronutrient test and get tested for your vitamin D levels, your nutritional levels to see where you're at, and then take some supplements specifically for where you're deficient. That should also help bring some balance there once you're off. Now, in terms of, you know, the best type of natural birth control, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to share, share with you, I mean, you know, what, what Chelsea and I have done for years, we've had two methods. One, we use a condom. And the other one is we have something called the lady comp. Okay. I don't, we, we don't have a deal with them, but it's just like this, uh, it's this, uh, uh, little, um, very little device. And basically it tells Chelsea when she's ovulating, you know, green says go red says no. Okay. In terms of getting pregnant. And so what I would say is look into that device. It's called the lady comp lady, L A D Y comp C O M P lady comp. And there's probably different versions of it. But but that's what we've used. Um, there's also a mucus test that you can you 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 can do on yourself um, to to see what your mucosa is like and the the thickness of it. That can tell you. Uh, that's a, yeah, yeah, the forms of natural fa family planning. I've written an article on this as well. If you go online and search Doctor Axe, uh, Doctor Axe natural family planning. Okay. So Dr. Axe, natural family planning, and I've written an article and you can read more there, but, but I think those, those are, are some good solutions. And Hey, any women that are watching this, I would love to hear, Hey, have you ever used the lady comp? What are some of the things you do for natural birth control? I know we have a lot of wise women who might share their thoughts on here on social media or on YouTube as well. Another question, how can I get an optimal shape to conceive in my late thirties? Okay. So what, what I would do is, is again, I would have a multi-pronged approach here if you're looking at conceiving. And in Chinese medicine, conception is based on the health of your adrenals and kidneys and reproductive organs. So think about it like this. If you want to conceive, let's say you, let, let's say like on your, on your phone here, you got a battery, uh, between zero and 100. The reason why women typically can't conceive now, this isn't a hundred percent of the time, but this is probably 90% of the time, okay? Almost all the time when women can't conceive, it's because this battery, okay, like on your phone here, it's too low, okay? So the battery for your adrenals. 
So if you're in a fight or flight state too much, or you're too stressed, or you don't have certain nutrients to wear, like like a lot of it's tied to kind of your energy and your vitality. Now, now having a miscarriage is a very different thing, by the way. Miscarriage is there's a weakness around your spleen and your pancreas and your insulin levels and holding something. It's very different than conception. Uh, so so again, with 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 carrying, you want to actually do something a little bit more different. It would be things like cinnamon and sweet potato and beef and things like, think about Thanksgiving meal, sitting by a warm fire, cozying up. That's for caring. But for conceiving, you want to strengthen up. You want to really think about those adrenals. And so I would take some adrenal supplements. I would take something like an ashwagandha. Uh, Rishi mushroom is another great one. So things to really strengthen up that sort of those adrenal areas. Also, it may be hormone balance that it could be an estrogen progesterone imbalance. If that's the case, Vitex is an herb is very effective, but I would say generally speaking, a good diet would be again, a good amount of meat, a lot of vegetables, berries, and rice. These all feed in Chinese medicine called your water element, which is tied to conception. And so that's what I would focus on there. But you really want to focus on just taking care of yourself. Here, here's the, you got to keep stress levels low and you got to build a lot of peace and fun in your life. Okay. So if you're constantly worrying and thinking you have fear in, in some way that's constantly going, or you're overthinking stuff, overanalyzing all the time or worrying about, okay, I'm in my late thirties. I, I got to do this before 40 or before 45, you, you know, you're, that's very stressful. So what I would say is you need to get in a state of mind that's that's building peace. And the best way to do that is not just to say, okay, I'm going to try and de-stress. It's to schedule things you love to do. Schedule things that bring you joy. Schedule things that help relax you. Read novels. Go for walks in the park. Do lunch with a best friend. Go to church service, praise and worship. Do, I, do things that are going to reduce stress in your body. And in addition, eat a clean diet. Do, don't over-exercise and don't under-exercise. You know? If you're doing CrossFit for three hours a day, that's typically not ideal, but if you're going for an hour a day and you're generally pretty healthy, that's great. You know, so so that's that's my best advice for for increasing your fertility is eat incredibly healthy. There are some good things. I really I do like red light therapy um, for for sort of anti aging there as well. Um, I think it could be a good thing if you get an infrared, one of those infrared lights. There's a couple of brands there. There's like Juve and Bond Charger couple I know that are really good um, for 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 those those infrared light. Um, are there any natural treatments for low platelets during pregnancy? Well, I think this is contraindicated, so I don't even know if I'm going to say it. Well, if typically if people have low platelets, um, papaya leaf historically is very good, but that might be contraindicated. And I don't have that in the back of my head. I used to know, but I don't now. So you need to go and look up papaya leaf. If not, here's what you need to do. You need to get a lot of red meat. Okay and green leafy vegetables and do, I like beetroot juice powder, okay? You can do a lot of things to kind of help build the blood, okay? But red meat is ideal. Now, this is also contraindicated in the United States, but in Europe, they do it all the time, is women will eat some liver, okay? And I think that sometimes there's a concern about the vitamin A and iron level uh, getting too high, but, but, uh, but I think if you're doing a small amount or dose of organ meat, I, I do think that there are tremendous benefits there for platelets, but I would say focus on doing red meat for most of your meals. I mean, every lunch and dinner, a lot of red meat, beetroot juice, okay, as a supplement, um, getting a little bit of cinnamon and ginger, those herbs are very good for platelets, cinnamon especially. So if you're having, let's say, something in the morning, like a little bit of oatmeal, or let's say a little bit of smoothie or some applesauce, add some pumpkin pie spice in, okay, or cinnamon. So add about a fourth a teaspoon, you know, get some cinnamon and ginger, those will help. But my best advice to you would be herbs, cinnamon, and ginger. Um, and then uh, the other thing I would do is a lot of red meat, beetroot juice, you know, steamed spinach, some of those steamed green vegetables. Uh, those are Those are some of the best things you can do naturally to help elevate your uh, elevate your platelets. All right, next question here. What are the best postpartum supplements to take while breastfeeding? You have to build your blood. After you give birth, there's been a lot of blood loss, okay? And did you know, do you know what breast milk is primarily made up of? Blood. 
So when women are breastfeeding, they need to really focus on building blood. I, I, you, you'll see this with a lot of women. Like, like if you look, if when I looked at Chelsea right after she gave birth to Arwen for the next month, her skin was a lot more pale, okay, or or the days afterwards. And so I knew, I said, okay, we really have to go build your blood. And this is known across the board in Chinese medicine that after women give birth, you got to build blood. This is why that oftentimes uh, what we'll do with Chelsea is we'll encapsulate her placenta and have her start taking that because the placenta is almost all blood. It's blood and collagen. That's like a if you when you take your own placenta, you're getting like a blood co- collagen uh, mineral supplement. That's that's what it is. And um, and so uh, that's 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 one of the first things you should do is encapsulate your placenta and do that afterwards. Uh, and then. Uh, what I would do is, again, I really like organ meats. And so I would say liver, or you can take liver capsules or an organ capsule that has multiple organs together. I would do that. Um, and then very similar thing to the last person, actually, you just want to really build your blood. Okay. Now platelets are a little different, but they're very similar. It's going to be similar food. So beetroot juice, a lot of uh, grass fed beef and bison and lamb. Um, cinnamon is another really good one to have uh, postpartum. But that, that, that's what you want to do. You really want to do everything you can to really build and strengthen the blood postpartum. That, that'll lead by far to the fastest healing. And acupuncture, I think, is really good as well if you want to get acupuncture. I really like that for, uh, for, 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 for helping. But supplements and organ supplement, organ blend. Uh, and, then maybe, and then a blood builder. So you can get a blood builder, uh, whether it be Floridex or uh, there's a number of them out there. But I would do something to help, help build the blood. Um, how can I balance my hormones after having kids? You know, I, I think, you know, there's some overlap with some of these questions, but I would say with, with, with this one, um, get more healthy fats and don't overconsume carbohydrates. I think that's one of the biggest things I see is when a mom, it's like, well, you're feeding your kid this, so you're going to eat that. And it's just, there starts to be, you know, kids can handle more carbohydrates. I look at our three and a half year old and it's like, she could eat like a banana and an orange and a fruit, like and she's just fine, right? And I was like that as a kid, and I would never get tired. So for you, I would go high protein, moderate fat, low carb, generally speaking. So when you're eating a meal, get lots of protein and lots of meat, lots of vegetables. Berries are great. You can do some rice, sweet potato. Uh, you know, Sweet potato traditionally is actually very good for hormones as well. So sweet potato or yam, I, I think are very good. Now, 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 there are a lot of herbs that I, I'm going to recommend now, too. If you know you're a little bit higher on that stress level, which a lot of women are, they go and get into more of that fight or flight state because even even uh, that maternal instincts of being the protector for their children and what like cautiously watching out like you, know, you got your mom radar are on and you know when there's about to be a kid falling off a, you know, a countertop, you're in a fight or flight state. So ashwagandha and adaptogenic herbs that kind of help lower those cortisol levels can be extremely beneficial. So I would say ashwagandha would be number one on my list. Um, in addition to that, I would say um, astragalus. It's immune related, but also it's hormone related. Uh, I like Vitex a lot. Vitex is a, or chastberry, it's also named, is also kind of helps bring balance to those hormones after having kids. Um, and you can take an, an adrenal blend. There's another one called Romania, R-E-H-M-A-N-N-I-A, Romania, that isn't really popular in the US, but I think it's very good for, it's really popular in China, and one of the top five most prescribed herbs in all of Asia, but we just don't use it here that often. But it's a really good one for female hormones after birth. And if you feel like you're a little fatigued and you need to, you know, and stressed and you, and you need help there. Um, and then Dong Kwai, that's known as uh, female ginseng, but it's a uh, Dong Kwai. So those would be my top ones there, I would say, for hormones after kids. Let me just give you my ashwagandha first, Dong Kwai, and Vitex. Those are the three I would take, ashwagandha, Vitex, Dong Kwai. What are your thoughts on the HPV vaccine? Here's the reality that I want to share with you right now is that I can't actually tell you what I want to tell you about my views on this because this video will be banned. So what I can tell you is our daughter, our daughters, uh, Arwen and the one that's about to be born here any day now, uh, won't be getting it. Um, but I, I can't tell you what, what you should think about it, but I can tell you our family, uh, won't be giving that to our, our kids. All right. A couple more questions. My teenage daughter is dealing with really severe cramps. Do you have any suggestions that aren't pills? I'm still going to give you a, 
an herb, but I am going to tell you some things you can do. It, it tends to be due to stress, okay? Uh, so the more stress, the more severe the cramps. So everything you can do to help your daughter just lower those stress levels, you know, I think um, knowing that maybe where she's deficient, let's say she's a worrier, help her with worry. Maybe maybe you spend some time as a family reading the Bible together, and you and your, you know, if you're married, your husband, you you talk through some some, some things that uh, you need to do to help her with whatever unhealthy emotion she's experiencing. But I think there's a lot of emotions that are tied to um, cramps and. Um, from a dietary perspective, you want to do a, a, a you know you you want to do very similar diet I've talked about a lot. You want to do a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, and then things like sweet potatoes and rice. That's sort of the ideal diet. Okay, um, if she's eating a lot of like cheese or anything she's allergic to, it's going to make it much worse. Uh, you know, dairy products especially when we're looking at cramps or wheat or gluten. So staying away from those. Um, from a uh, from a supplement standpoint, cramp bark. It's literally called cramp bark. It's a Chinese medicine herb called cramp bark. It's the herb that's been prescribed for thousands of years for cramps. Uh, so that would be one I would recommend. Vitex is the other one. And then if she is maybe excess estrogen, milk thistle is the other one. So those are the herbs I would recommend. These are also can be very effective sometimes for acne for for young women. So that that's what I would recommend. And if she's also losing some excess blood, she can do Don Quai. Another big one is magnesium. Okay, I would really recommend magnesium before she has her cramps coming on. Have her start supplementing with magnesium days before she knows her cycle starting and take it throughout. So that would be another big one. But milk thistle, Vitex cramp bark. And if you also know she's got uh, maybe excess estrogen, then, then milk thistle. That, that's what I would. And by the way, I know those are kind of pills. Hey, if you don't want a pill, take those as a tea. Okay. You can get uh, teas or a powder magnesium. So, all right, next question. I'm curious about working out and training throughout different stages of my cycle. Some days I feel way more ambitious and excited to work out than others. Should women do different exercises depending on the stage of their cycle? Yes. The answer is yes. And so, uh, by the way, my, my wife and I, we've actually talked about this. This was years ago on a podcast we did. And, and, and I've, I've actually looked into the science of this. I've interviewed women in the past about this, uh, 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 um, hormonal experts, uh, an endocrinologist. And, and basically, listen to your body. When you know you're going through that stage of your cycle where you're going to feel strong, do your leg day. Do your butt day lift heavier weights, do more HIIT training, do those things. And on days where you just feel weak and depleted, do a lighter exercise, you know, do, do lighter weights, do body weight stuff, go on walks, do yoga, do Pilates, do bar. Now, by the way, I'm not saying Pilates and bar are easy, by the way. I think that sometimes they're less physiologically taxing because you aren't doing as many reps with, let's say like a, sometimes a bigger muscle group. But if you're doing very intense yoga and bar, then that can also be too depleting uh, or, or bar or Pilates. Uh, so, so I would say that, yes, think about it. Be strategic about doing more heavyweight training and interval training, CrossFit, those sort of workouts on those days where you feel like you have the most energy. On the others, go for a light 20-minute Peloton. You know, go for a walk, do a yoga class. I definitely think there is wisdom in doing that 100%. Um, hey, for all the women out there who've been watching this, hey, let me know what your biggest takeaway was from the podcast and other questions or episodes you want me to cover in the future. And for men, hey, I hope you listened in on the needs of your women. So the next time your your woman has a headache, you know what to do for her. If she has questions about her cramps, well, maybe you can be a little bit more sensitive and maybe, hey, even recommend some cramp bark. You know, maybe you just come in as a hero there and show up with some, you know, some with cramp bark, Vitex or, or Don Quai and, you know, be the, be the hero of the day. So all that being said, hey, I appreciate everybody. Thanks so much for the comments. And listen, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe here to the show. Did you know that only a small percentage of the videos I release actually show up in your feed. So if you're not subscribed, you might be missing out on a great upcoming ep episode or an interview with a person like Carrie Underwood or Tim Tebow or Mark Hyman or Dave Asprey or Vani Hari that we have coming up on the show, both in the past, but a lot of these people are coming up in the future. So say, th thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. Thanks for your comments. And hey, if you know someone else who needs to hear this, please share it with them. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.